Alright everyone, hope you're well. So, we're having a bit of an experiment. Well, I'm calling it an experiment because I'm pretty sure it's going to work. It will, it will work, but how well it's going to work, I don't know. So, uh, that's just a good excuse to mess around with brewing. <laughs> that's where most of the fun comes from. So the idea today is to take the eating malt that you saw in a previous video, which was the potluck beer with blueberries. Oh yes, blueberry porter, that's what it turned out to be. I'll stick the link up there if you haven't seen it. It's got the link to uh, where you can get this stuff. If it's cheap, it comes and goes. But we're gonna be taking this a step further and we're gonna be turning this into a stout. Guinness, for those people that don't know what a stout is. Guinness, everyone knows what Guinness is. So that's the idea. You would normally go, normally when you're brewing beer, you kind of want it as close to one as possible. We're going the opposite way. I want to get this, in theory, somewhere near when it's finished, 1.040. That's where I'm looking to uh, finish this beer. Now, it's not going to be sugars because this does actually brew to pretty much dryness. So it is it is quite literally just carbohydrates. Mm. But we're going to use that to give us that creamy mouthfeel that you get with a decent Guinness and hopefully good head retention as well. Oh yes. So to aid me to bring up this gravity and also the other ingredient to make the stout, I've got 200 grams of pearl barley. Oh yeah, just, just cheap Tesco pearl barley. Now a portion that goes into, well, a proportion of the grain bill that goes into here is roasted unmalted barley. That's what gives it its mouthfeel and texture. So we're going to be adding some, uh, well, I'm going to pan fry these to black them up to make them taste like coffee. Plus, because they're solid, I can cook these for a bit, extract the flavors and the juices, and I should, in theory, be able just to strain them off as I put them inside the demijohn so these don't go in or break down. It should make my life a lot easier. That is the theory. So uh, enough talking. Let's do this. So we have our trusty hob and pan. Now, if you're gonna be doing this, uh, use an old pan, don't, don't use a new one. Uh, a lot of nonstick pans don't like being dry heated, just so you've been warned. So currently nothing needs to be sterilized because we're, we're just roasting stuff up. Now we can use an oven to do it, but it will take a couple of hours to get a really deep dark roast. We don't need to do that, we're just using this as basically a flavor addition. Uh, pearl barley, or barley, or wheat for that matter, that has been roasted is a substitute for coffee in times of old. So uh, let's make some old school coffee, though we're not going to make coffee out of it. So in it goes. 200 grams, oh that looks pretty. Now we're just going to slowly heat this through. I'm just going to cook myself some pearl barley. What could go wrong? So our barley has been roasted and well, I have to say, it looks a lot like coffee now. It has a kind of nice smell to it. I could see how it could be mistaken for coffee uh, or used as a substitute for coffee back when coffee was really hard to get hold of. So we have our roasted grains. Now in normal beer we'd be grinding this down but we're not going to do that because we don't need to. We're not going to be using this as a fermentable carbohydrate. We're using it as well, basically the flavoring to make our stout which is cool. So the trusty big pan in goes our grains. Now, looking beautiful. So what we need to do now is extract the colors, the flavors, and the aromas, and some of the carbohydrates from this lovely barley mix. It does smell pretty good, actually. So I have measured out one liter of water, though the barley is going to suck some up. But still, it's nice to be underneath what we need. In goes our water. All right. 
Now I'm going to cook the greens and hopefully extract some colors and some flavors from the pearl barley. So uh, again with the boiling, I'll see you in a bit. It does smell good though. So these greens have been now on for 35 minutes and I can tell you it actually smells really good. It does. It actually really does smell a lot like coffee, which is nice. It also has some malty biscuit like smell to it as well. Oh, and hints of chocolate. Oh, don't ask me where they came from, but that's what it smells like. So I'm going to turn this off. And instead of trying to take a picture inside, uh, inside this thing, I've got the jug. So it went in clear and I've got a funnel on the top. Now it doesn't need to be sterile, it just needs to be clean because, well, this is sterilized. So I'm just going to show you what we got because, well, this is kind of the make or break. Did it work? So let's pour some of this liquid back in. That looks like coffee. <laughs> that that does look like coffee. There could be some uh, there could be some hope for this recipe after all. So we've done all the legwork. We have a rather nice looking coffee malty substitute. I have pre-measured out one kilo of malt. I've added some boiling water into there because well we need to. Nothing needs to be sterilized because it's going back in the pan to be heated through because uh, malt has a tendency to stick on everything when it's cold. There we go. So I'm going to go through and add these into the pan. Going to need some more water. Right, and there we go. The malt has been added in. And since, because why not, it's going to be adding in anyway, I'm going to add in uh, basically one liter of black stuff. There we go. So we already know that the eating malt is going to be 5%. Uh, that's what it turned out last time. I'm expecting pretty much the exact same result this time. The only difference is we're making something different. It's good to know this stuff. <laughs> so, back on the boil. We need to heat this through, get it all mixed up, and get it sterilized since this was open. Better safe than sorry. So I've got my spoon. So our malt has come up to temperature. It's definitely sterilized. It's looking really good. So I'm going to turn it off now. Oh, it's actually got a nice head of foam on it, and it smells Smells really good. Those are uh, basically the burnt barley that we added in. It's giving it a like a chocolatey, biscuity note. It's got the coffee edge, but it's also got the sweetness of the malt now. It smells good enough to eat. I may, I may have to. Anyway, so I'm going to be adding some hops into it. And as you know, I don't like boiling hops. I just, this should already have a good percentage of bitterness in there. It's already got kind of the acrid burnt notes from the barley. So I prefer to dry hop because it gives me more flavors and it gives me a little bit of bitterness, not too much. Now the hops that I am using, just if you're interested, are cluster hops normally used for, uh, for bittering purposely. Good stuff. But I really like the aromas. So I've got about four grams of hops Oh, they do smell good. Again, more of a citrusy note to it. I, I like the citrus. And I'm just going to dump these straight in here. Oh, yeah. Looking lovely. Give it a little swirl around. Oh, should be nice. Now, we could have made this entirely supermarket brew, but I, I, I had some hops, so I'm going to use some. Oh, I've added all this stuff together. It is now piping hot. We need to cool it down, so I could just leave it as is, but 
I'm going to stick it in my sink, otherwise known as a cold water bath, to cool it down rapidly. So while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to finish sterilizing my demijohn, I'm going to wipe down my surfaces, I'm going to sterilize my funnel and my hydrometer, because, uh, well, you know, I've got some time to kill, as you do. So, see you once this is done. So it's taken about 20, 25 minutes, something like that, for our lovely beer must to have cooled down to an appropriate temperature. Now you will notice throughout the video, I have not given measurements for water because uh, we, we don't need that currently as long as it's under the five liters or 4.5 liters. You should be fine because we're gonna be topping up either way. So just bear that in mind. Doesn't matter right until the end, just keep a rough track of how much water you've added. So it is time to do the cool stuff. So everything has been sterilized. I use bleach and washing up liquid, including on my side. So I have my funnel because I spill everything everywhere. Have my clean demijohn, sterile demijohn I should say. Fresh, but not bleachy. Very important. I also have ooh, my hydrometer in fresh water. And I've got a kettle. Oh yes, now I previously boiled the kettle so it was sterilized. I've just filled it full of cold water so I don't have to move around. It's just easy. So let's see what we've got. Have we made something that could be a Guinness or a stout of some description? Or did we just make interesting flavored water? Who knows? So we don't need the spoon anymore. How does it taste? Ooh got chocolate notes in there. A little bit of bittering, a little astringent. This could be a winner. So let's see what we've got. So, since we've already scooped out all of those uh, bits of barley, it should be pretty easy going. That doesn't look bad. It is plenty dark, but it's only half filled up. So I've got my fresh water. That's rinse out the pan, right? And now I'm just gonna top she up. Yeah, somewhere around there. Right, since this thing is bubbling and yeah, it's pretty bubbly. Let's give it a good shake to mix it all up, and then I'm gonna leave it to sit for a few minutes. Just so the foam dies down so we can take an accurate hydrometer reading. So it's taken a little while for this to clear, you know, the foam to die down, which is kind of a good thing, because uh, in theory that should mean more carbohydrates, more mouth texture and feel. That's the theory. Don't know if it's gonna work out that way, but uh, you can only try these things. So let us pop the hydrometer in and let us see what the potential alcohol is. Even though we know we used a kilo of malt and it will ferment to about 5%. Hopefully this is gonna have a higher starting gravity because uh, those carbohydrates from the barley that we added in. Ooh, it's up there. So it is saying Actually, it's pretty close to 1.070. That's pretty good. So I can pop that out. So it was 1.068, which is approximately, if this fermented to dryness, and it was all sugar, about 11%. Uh, occasionally I get told, no, the hydrometer is inaccurate. It's more like nine. You always read the hydrometer down to 990 some hydrometers down to 980. I mean, they, it does go pretty dry since one is the relative density of water. Alcohol weighs less than water, so it's, it's more. Always read it like that, not as you would expect it to finish at one. So uh, that's pretty good. That is actually higher than the potluck beer. So in theory, we should have more infermentable carbohydrates inside here. Mm. It tastes really good anyway. So, one last thing to do, and that's add the yeast. We don't need to add nutrient because it's all multi-goodness. It should all have everything it needs to ferment inside. 
So I'm using just plain old ale yeast. Nothing fancy, nothing fantastic. And uh, yeah, all we gotta do, sprinkle a little bit on the top, put the lid on top and give it like a little bit of a turn just so it sticks that way bugs can't get in and uh, the air will be CO2 can get out. And that's as done. I mean, we have in theory made something like a stout. I don't know. We will find out once we get to taste it, which is pretty cool. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones and well, subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing. See you later.